Hey guys, welcome back to Independent Verification. My name is Andrew, and today we're gonna to be talking about how to level out your X-axis gantry on an Ender 3 or Ender 3 Pro 3D printer. Now here is the particular situation that we are facing. Our left side of the gantry is actually lower than our right side, which is a bit atypical because typically speaking, with an Ender 3 Pro, you have the lead screw on the left which holds the left side in a fixed position where the right side can be lifted or lowered by use of the eccentric nut that can be adjusted on the back of this wheel. However, our right side has always been consistently higher than our left side even when we readjusted the frame, we readjusted the eccentric nut positions, and really, there was only one good reason as to why this was happening. Now in a situation like this, it's not so much about what you can do with fine tuning adjustments, it's really more about what Creality has done during the manufacturing process. At the end of the day, this is a budget printer. And because of that, you don't really get a bunch of premium machining and quality control that you would with some much more expensive name brand printers. And that's ultimately what leads to this particular situation. And it is a little odd. From what we can gather, there are three main reasons why you may have this type of misalignment. The first thing has to do with this small aluminum extrusion that makes up your x-axis gantry. Unfortunately, a lot of times, this piece of metal is just simply not flat. In our case, luckily it is, but if you take anything that is a known flat surface, maybe a table that's made out of glass that's typically very flat, or you get yourself a square that you would use for measuring and carpentry and such, and you place it on your x-axis, if it is not completely 180 degrees flat, you may never get it to a point where the left side and the right side are going to be lined up. And depending on how it's bent may cause the situation where the right side is higher than the left side. The next suspected thing that could cause this is actually the plate where the lead screw nut connects to the lead screw. You see, this has to be a good 90 degree angle compared to the vertical extruded aluminum that it is connected to. However, it's well known that Creality doesn't always get this particular part right. And if this is bent in any particular way, well, it does connect directly to the X axis. And if that is off, and it's bent in some weird way, it could make your x-axis on the right side tilt one way or the other, higher or lower. There's other issues that it can cause too in regards to binding on the lead screw, but we're going to save that for a different video. Now in our case, it was something completely different. Again, it comes down to Creality and their manufacturing. This is a bit weird. So the gist of the situation is these two vertical extrusions are not the same length. That's a problem. Up here at the top, you may be able to bottom out the screws into the tapped portions where they connect to. But down here, if these are different, you will run into a very weird problem. One side of your gantry is going to be higher than the other. In our case, our left side was shorter than our right side. And because of that, this frame was tilted. So if this was the top right here, it was actually leaning like this. It was only a very slight amount, but when we're talking with fractions of a millimeter here, that slight amount makes a huge difference. And because of that, our right side of our gantry was always more than three millimeters higher than the left side of the gantry. And this was the case regardless of how we adjusted the eccentric screws, however many times we adjusted the frame, however many troubleshooting issues we did. That being said, there is a simple fix for this. When one side is slightly taller than the other, we can compensate for that. Whether you use shims, whether you use washers, or really anything that will put space in between 
this bottom horizontal rail and this this vertical rail right here you just need to move this rail up just a little bit however many millimeters off one side is compared to the other that's what you should try and aim for to create an offset in our case just for testing purposes we just took some paper we folded it up however many millimeters off this one side was and used it to shove right under here and if you come over here you can actually see what we did now this is temporary just to test out this thesis and to our surprise it works quite well you'll see that there is a, now a gap in between where this horizontal and vertical extrusion intersect this is what has allowed us to fix what Creality messed up in the first place. By raising this up, we now take that skewed portion and we are balancing it out. Now, our x-axis gantry is within one millimeter of distance between each other from the top of the frame. Now, it's technically level. Now, obviously, a level x-axis gantry is very important for any 3D printer, whether you're running a single Z or a dual Z setup. In our situation, we are running a dual Z setup where we have two motors, one on each side, so a stepper motor on the left, a stepper motor on the right. Each one has their own spider coupler that they are connected to that connects to the lead screw. This is where things get tricky because it is far more important now than before to make sure that the frame is absolutely perfect because if you don't you'll run into issues like this so most people when they run a dual z setup do not run dual motors the typical solution is to use a timing belt system up at the top so that everything is synchronized with each other using only one motor the common belief is that if you run dual motors you'll simply become out of sync. Now that can be true to an extent and to an extent is the key word because what happens is when one motor becomes a little bit too far out of sync with another, the one that is too far out of sync will lock up and bind until the other motor reaches a height on the lead screw where it no longer binds and then freely moves up and down. There is a very, very small limit to how far off either of these motors can be from each other because they are synced. They're stepper motors. They are very accurate. They run off of the same electrical signal. The cable from the motherboard comes and splits off in a Y connection. They both receive the same data at the same time. They're both the same model stepper motors. They run the same exact lead screw with the same pitch. They even run the same exact spider couplers. So everything is actually really, really well synced. But the problem with that is compensation for the offset that you have when your frame is not perfect. Now, typically speaking, the common knowledge is to take the lead screw nuts. That's this right here or this over here where it connects to the gantry and the lead screw goes through. And take that nut back off the screws a little bit. And what that allows is for the nut to wobble in place. Because if you don't and you have a standard setup, you might incur some binding on your lead screw. Now in our case, it's a bit different because we have what's known as a spider coupler connecting to the shaft of the stepper motor and the lead screw. What that means is instead of compensating for any sort of misalignment between the shaft and the lead screw up here at the nut, we're compensating for it down here at the very bottom where the shaft of the motor connects to the lead screw. Spider couplers, this is what they're for. That's why they're used. Now, here's the thing. Spider couplers are comprised of three parts, the top, bottom, and the spider in the center. And all three of those parts can separate. The reason why this is a bit of a pain in the butt with a system set up like this is because instead of simply binding at one particular point until the motor can grab and unbind from the other side, 
when your x-axis gantry is misaligned what ends up happening is one side's spider coupler simply comes undone now this is because it's desperately trying to compensate for this horrible misalignment but even spider couplers have their limits these are really nice spider couplers they're definitely not the cheap ones but everything has to be within reason so when we're talking even just a very small number, just a few millimeters, just a few degrees set off of its designed axis can cause this really bad binding. That's why it's super important to have these, this, everything about the frame perfect on a dual motor setup because you've got twice as many things to worry about. And when that doesn't work, it fails spectacularly. So once you've got your frame all nice and leveled up, and in this case, just using a paper shim in place of what will be some metal washers in the future, we now have a system set up that moves perfectly in sync with each other with two separate motors moving the gantry up and down exactly the way we'd like it allowing us to get some beautiful, high-quality prints no matter where we are printing on the build surface. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope this information was helpful. If it was, please consider leaving a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, consider subscribing. Until then, remember, measure twice, print once.